I'm Anu Deshpande, and I teach at Westboro High School in Westboro, Mass. And I'm Aaron Matthew. I'm a science teacher at Acton Boxborough Regional High School in Acton, Massachusetts. Uh, today we're going to share with you some information about what is a plasmid. And so before we dive deep into a plasmid, we're going to talk a little bit about what is DNA, because DNA is what makes up plasmid. So this hopefully is going to be a review for you, but this right here is a double helix of DNA, and the double helix is sometimes called the twisted ladder. And when we see this, we see that there is a backbone to each of the two strands, and then coming out of those backbones, we see the bases. Now the question is, where does this DNA appear in different cell types? Let's take a look at a eukaryotic cell. In a eukaryotic cell, as you can see over here, the, you have a organelle, which is named as the nucleus, and within the nucleus, you see the DNA in the form of these diffuse fibers, which is referred to as chromatin. You do not see the typical X-shaped structures, chromosomes, unless the cell is undergoing division or getting ready to divide. So contrasting a eukaryotic cell with a bacterial cell, we're only going to see a single chromosome in a bacterial cell. And so it's usually represented by a single loop that we see here. And we would notice that it's not going to be enclosed within a nucleus. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as a nucleoid region, but it's not inside an organelle because bacterial cells don't have membrane-bound organelles. Now, in addition to this bacterial chromosome, bacteria contain several small or large circular structures, and this also is DNA. It is, the, it is these loops, in addition to the bacterial chromosome, which are referred to as plasmids. Now, plasmids vary in size. They can be a few genes to several hundred genes, and each of these genes, in turn, carry specific traits, which they then confer upon the cell that holds them. And what we found is that while plasmids are naturally occurring uh, within bacteria and are used within bacteria to pass genes back and forth, we have been able to engineer, scientists and engineers have been able to put genes of interest into plasmids and then get bacterial cells to take up those genes of interest. And as a result of that, we can now have these bacterial cells work as little machines for us that will churn out the protein of interest. So for example, if you wanted to make a lot of insulin, you could take the insulin gene and put it on a plasmid, get bacterial cells to take it up, and now you have a little bacterial machine that's going to mm -hmm. churn out lots of insulin. So I hope you found this video useful, and thanks for connecting with us at Lab Exchange.